Hello, I'm Diana Belchase with Book Smart TV, and I'm here with the incredible, really amazing Lori Khan, who is a producer with Blueberry Hill Productions, and I am so amazed by this woman's career. Now, Lori, you started out with this incredible, I mean, you've done documentaries all over the place, but you've gone from a national Emmy for Midwives all the way to be nominated again for a national Emmy for Tupperware. Yep. <laughs> You've done things in Central America, right? Yep. You've done all kinds of political things and now you have spent the last five years of your life working on a documentary about romance writers, love between the covers, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so tell me, what inspired you to do this? Well. I worked on many films before I became an independent filmmaker, but as an independent filmmaker, I have been telling stories of extraordinary communities of women that mm -hmm. no one takes seriously. And mm -hmm. they interest me. I mean, I think women's stories don't get told nearly often enough. And mm -hmm. I was really inspired by my work, as many of us were, on Eyes on the Prize, where we were telling history from the bottom up instead yes. of from the top down, mm -hmm. and telling the stories of people, the foot soldiers, the people who normally don't get their stories told. And so after I jumped off and became an independent filmmaker, I first made a midwife's tale, and then Tupperware, and did a bunch of different things in between. And I was not a huge romance reader myself, although I'd read as a teenager. Mm -hmm. But here's this multi-billion dollar industry by women, for women, about women, and it's dissed by everybody. I mean, yes. to me, that's like, okay, I'm there. That has got to be something interesting going on there. Um, what is it? And I jumped in as a, you know, complete virgin and have learned a lot and mm -hmm. really had a great time. Well, I've seen you at the conferences over the past five years. I've seen you go into to workshops where you saw um, people dressing and undressing in Victorian <laughs> garb, where, where the microphone was passed and people were talking about right. Rita nominations and you were at the awards ceremonies. And you've really become a part of the community. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what did you discover more than, than the community of women, what did you come away with seeing the journey in, of, of women writing? A couple things. I mean, first of all, I had no idea that it was a much broader community than the historical romance. So to know that there was a range from evangelical all the way to BDSM was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And how large that umbrella is, and as different as those writers are, and as different as those subgenre are, it really does work as a community that mm -hmm. has a kind of come on in, sister, I'm going to pay forward what someone helped me at the beginning, I'm going to pay it forward to the person who's behind me. And any reader is a mm -hmm. possible writer. And that's, I think, highly unusual. And women work together in different ways. I mean, there is something about um, business and community are inextricably linked. You can't say, is this film about the business? Is this film about the community? It's about, they're both. It's, it's one yes. and the same. Yes. You know, what struck me about the film is I belong to a, a ton of different writing organizations. I belong to the Children's Writers, the Authors Guild, the Mystery Writers of America, etc. When I got to Romance Writers of America, I'd been told, oh, it's sort of silly. They're not that very bright. The first they time they really I, told who told this, you that? Oh, editors told me this, oh, and wow. I've had many other people who've had this experience. But the first thing that I found out were people were geneticists. They were forensic anthropologists. They were doctors, lawyers, CFOs. They were the most amazing women I had ever encountered in my and life high school dropouts, the whole range. The whole range. All voracious readers. But even the high school dropouts were some of the most intelligent women I had ever met in my life. They may not have had the sheepskin, but they had the knowledge. And you really bring that out in your, your documentary. <laughs> my, my question to you, though, is here is this, this group of writers that is disrespected, as you said, dissed, you know, so thoroughly. Mm -hmm by men and women alike, which, you know, talk about sisterhood. How 
Did any of that rub off on you when you were doing this? Were people telling you, don't do this? Um, or were people intrigued by the project when you presented it? Ah, uh, good question. Um, it's interesting how this was different than doing Tupperware. Tupperware was kind of retro chic, funny, mm -hmm. kind of charming, people thought. I mean, like fluffy, they thought, mm -hmm. which it's not. I mean, it's a great story. Mm -hmm. um, and a very deep story in many ways. But um, this one, you didn't have the same reactions of, oh, how retro chic. It was just like, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, or if someone was in the romance community, it was like, you know, bravo, that's great, but I'm not sure I trust you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which I understand. Um, so it was harder. And I, I did, I know how to write grants, humanities grants. So I did get little bits of money initially, and then my biggest grants were from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Mm -hmm. um, it was very hard to get money from anybody else, and I've got a good track record. Yeah. I mean, I applied to all of these foundations that fund films by women, films for women, um, people who are doing films about interesting characters. I struck out. I mean, I think that that prejudice against romance and against this topic, mm -hmm. um, I was definitely up against it. And then Senator Coburn, you know, ranted and railed about this project and mm -hmm. said it was the third most wasteful thing the government spent their money on in 2014. And, and you know, all my funders got nervous, and I understand why. And then mm -hmm. there was a bill introduced uh, by Representative Salmon from Arizona to kill this project, freestanding bill. Oh my God. And this is one of the most important pieces of work I've seen as a documentary because this community is so underserved as far as respect. Uh, Our sure. question to these guys is how many of your voters would want to support this? I mean, who mm -hmm. read romance? 75 million people read at least one romance last mm -hmm. year. I mean, they're tone deaf. Yeah. Yeah. But it, your, your project isn't just about the romance book. Not it's about the fact that it's one of the largest industries in the United States. I mean, this is an American business. It's an international business. Right. Right. I mean, it's also an entrepreneurial story. I mean, all of these people who want to promote enterprise, I mean, this is an absolutely perfect example of people who've created the own, their own industry and nurture those who are trying to get in and develop their own businesses. So. Mm -hmm. Now, as an impartial observer over the last five years, yes. well, I think maybe you're, you're less, um, less impartial now, but <laughs> starting off as an impartial observer, what do you think makes people so nervous about romance? Is it the sexuality? Is it the um, expression of emotion? Is it that happily ever after? Is it considered corny? What is it that gives other genres and people in general the right to say this is less? A uh, couple things. One thing, I think everyone goes, oh, the happily ever after, it's trite, it's a fairy tale. And as Beverly Jenkins points out in the film, Schwarzenegger movies never end, mm -hmm. you know, with Schwarzenegger dying. I mean, he always gets his happy end. Any mystery you read, the crime will be solved by the end. Mm -hmm. Any sci-fi book, the mm -hmm. you know bad guys will be vanquished by the end of the film, or at least you know uh, the good guys will win for the time being, at least. And yet, I mean, people told me that people will walk up to them on the beach or in a train and say, why do you read that trash? Mm -hmm. And I can't see anyone doing that to someone reading Stephen King or a mystery. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't think it's the happily ever after because people think it is, but then if you say to them, but wait a second, would you say that to somebody reading a mystery? And they go, no, I wouldn't. Oh, mm -hmm. you're right. Um, I think it's gender. I mean, I think that it's because it's about women, by women, for women, and anything about women, by women, for women, is less. It's mm -hmm. less in our culture. And the other thing I think is that women's desires are very frightening to people. Mm -hmm. Men's desires much less so. But I think women's desires are very frightening in this society. Well, I think we expect men to have desires. And I think we're still thinking of women as Betty Crocker. 
well, we're hoping. Not we, but <laughs> not many we, meant, people. Many people in the U.S. They hope that women are Betty Crocker, or at least that they're a little more manageable than like all of this exploration of, and and bold sort of statement of desire. I think it's just terrifying. Mm -hmm. And well, I think part of that has to do with with changing gender roles and men not knowing whether the world's turned upside down on them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you have men in your family that? you exposed to romance at all? Um, Were you successful at getting any men to read romance? Yeah, some. I mean, my editor had never read romance, and he's read some romance novels in the course of this project and was really surprised. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think all romance novels are good. I made sure I gave him the ones I thought were <laughs> better. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, you know, my own ex uh, told me that my interest in this subject and other subjects was, uh, what's this phrase? This is too personal. I would throw it out, but <laughs> I don't know how, you know, you, how much you edit. But um, yeah, he said it was offensive. Offensive. It's just such a shame. But I really applaud you for seeing the greater vision and for doing this. and and. Someone from, with your credentials, with your background, brings credibility to this subject. This wasn't done by somebody who didn't have the chops. You did this, you brought it, and you've brought respect to this profession. And I really have to thank you for that, Lori. Well, it's, thanks. It's, it's just an amazing thing you've done for the self-esteem of women who write and the women who read these books. And also for us to get a slice of what America is reading. That's right. What we read is, it tells so much about ourselves. So thank you so much for that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for being no. here. Thank you very much. And I'm Diana Belchase here with Lori Kahn, and this is Book Smart TV. Thank you for being here, and keep reading. Thank you. <laughs>